Well, hello. Once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection. Broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer. Hello, hello. <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> and we have with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely. That's what this is about. Thank you for the... Whoa. Whoa. That was weird. What happened? I don't know. Push the button. He's here! Is he here? Hello! Oh, we were getting worried. Thax and I were going to have well, to make awkward and weird conversation for the next time, which is not that different, but... I mean, we did it for the last 10 us. minutes already. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to come on going, you're not going to make it that hard for me to get on. I'll figure it out. You're not going to get rid of me that easily. Aww. Well, thanks for joining us, Jack. I know. Blue Stocking and Rita and I have been holding down the fort. <laughs> Talking about oh, the weather. I know Rita can definitely hold hold it down for us. <laughs> Stalwart anchor that she is for our podcast. I will say that uh, down here the weather has been under 100 degrees for days. Good. Is this that false fall I've been hearing about? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Don't get my hopes up. It's gonna dry. Yeah, this week was supposed to be not too. This not not too bad, but then it's gonna go back mm. up to the hundreds for a little while. So, but it can only. Well, I'm not gonna say that because if I say it can only last for so long, <laughs> then summer will last until November. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember so many days where it's been like over a hundred degrees on in you know Christmas Day. So in Texas, yes, West Texas. It oh. could be a hundred degrees in West okay. Texas on, on freaking Christmas. I have never. I think I may have driven through West Texas at one point when I was a wee child, but I don't really remember much. There's nothing much to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Which might be why Pretty flat. Pretty flat. <laughs> trees, trees are important. It's one reason I'm like, I live here and I'm like, I love the trees. But then I also have this thing of, I, I can't cut down a perfectly good tree. It just doesn't make sense to me. It breaks my brain. And uh, there's logging around here, which just utterly blows my mind. So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Johnny Steverson says, good to see you. Well, it's good to see <laughs> Here to be seen as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's seen. Glad my all my gears working. Make sure. <laughs> nice test of the old machine. So what's gone? Uh, what's happened in the last two weeks? Um, we lost Nichelle Nichols. Mm -hmm. which Olivia Newton John yesterday. Just yesterday, yeah. Um, the. Uh, the voice actress who was Ursula in The Little Mermaid. Yeah. She, passed. Yeah. she had a long no. uh, yep. professional history. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of folks have passed away this last two weeks. Um, so that's I mean I don't it's funny, I don't know how to feel about a, a lot of the, the folks that right now, I mean the the people who are passing have a are up in age, you know, they're yeah, at a point where it's yeah. not an, a surprise. And so. But it still know. feels like a loss. Yeah. But you don't know how to feel. Yeah. 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 Cause I, I'm under the uh, belief that they're, they're actually going places that, that uh, there are things to look forward to. Um <laughs> That's for however you want to yeah. uh, paint it, but uh, I'm when it's my time to go, I'm ready to go. The only well, I remember, I broke down and cried when Prince died, and Robin Williams. When Robin Williams, when I heard about Robin Williams, yeah, I just sat on the couch and cried for a little that while, and hard. then that, when I heard about Prince, but Prince was a part of the, the what the culling of 2017 when we were just celebrities were in musicians. David and Bowie. I, they were going uh, let um, yeah um oh god there were so many uh what lemmy from uh god i can't remember now uh, motorhead yes motorhead yeah. um yeah there was just i can't even think of them all there's 
so <laughs> many that it was just a horror. Aww. Puppies and it make you feel better. Yeah. So it's never, you know, some of them like Betty White. I mean, she was what, 12 days shy of 100? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> That's not a race I even want to participate in. <laughs> that, that, like, just let me go. Cool. <laughs> she was kicking right up until the end. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. She was very lucid. Um, and wow. Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. The older she got, the funnier she was. Because she didn't have anything to worry about anymore. What does she care She's about? Just like, I'm freaking Betty White. What are you going to do? You're going to well, kill my career? Oh, you mean I'm going to go the, finally have a vacation? Well, especially the Betty White renaissance that happened because of the internet. and <laughs> Everybody started oh, yeah. falling in love with her all over again. You know, I don't think her, her style of humor ever changed. She was that way the all whole time. time. I'm yeah. Betty White. What are you going to do? Best thing since sliced yeah. bread. Yeah. Or actually, um, no, it's the other way around. Sliced bread's the best thing since Betty White. Because she's older than sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. A... I see you got a drink there. Yes, I do. I got the Corona. <gasps> <gasps> we don't say that much. Nice. Around here. I have we'll this very like lovely beer. That you can poke through a mask and just sit there and just like <laughs> slurp on a Corona. <laughs> be utterly terrible. <laughs> And what does Jack have? Oh. Jack, what do you... Uh, what is that? Down right. there? I'm going with my usually standby here. If I can get the... Oh, Yingling. Yingling. Right. Yep, I it's do a like a Yingling. beer all around. It is. I had never had it till I went to Pennsylvania. And yeah. And then I got back... But it wasn't available down here when I moved home. Nope. So it's only it available a while. in the last couple of years here. Yeah. Like the last two. And thanks. Um, <laughs> I have uh, lemon apricot brains. <laughs> <laughs> double, yes. double smoothie sour. Ooh. Um, it's a beer. <laughs> it, Where it's do you a come up with these things? <laughs> <laughs> the grocery store is having this sale. I mean, you the, it, a I four pack of these is probably at twenty bucks. <laughs> twenty bucks for like a four my, pack. I guess, and I got them for five. So I was like, even okay. if it's bad, I'm going to try it. This is, I mean, wow. you can see it. it looks like juice. Yeah, it does. Um, well, the it, 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 like, half of it should be juice. <laughs> <laughs> Sour beers and acidic, fruity flavors go really well together. This kind of reminds me of a. Uh, Orange Dreamsicle beer. Ooh, I love <laughs> those. It's it's so, nice. I like it. Uh, when we, when I lived up in Maryland for seven months with my brother, who lived up there for about seven years, um, we drove through Delaware to get to the beach, and on our way through Delaware, which oddly look oddly enough looks a lot like East Texas, mm -hmm. huge tall trees, and then there'll just be like an area that they've just plow the trees over and put a cornfield. So, but randomly enough on the way on the highway, there was a Sonic. There's not been a Sonic for hundreds of miles. There's not even one in Maryland at the time. There, I, I didn't even know there was one in Delaware. We just, when we had to pull in and have like dream sickles and ocean water. Oh, ocean so, water. Love ocean yeah. water. That is the so best hangover remedy. Like, oh my Lord. <laughs> This is right before Google Maps and all that fun stuff, too. So it was one of those things of when you found a gym like that, you wrote down the address. And yeah. so every time we went to the beach after that, we'd stop for dream sickles because it was just like a flavor of home. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when we had Steve Metz on the show and he was promoting his Kickstarter for that uh, new... Uh, uh, Weird book of spells and and dark magic. I finally yeah. got mine. Was that before me? Hmm? I think that must have been before. I don't remember that. That must have been before that me. Thing is huge. Oh, wow. Look at that. I feel left out now. I, hmm? <laughs> I didn't have the money at the time. <laughs> wow. Ooh, mail him. Maybe he'll help you out. But. Uh, yeah, this was, and, and I got the, the full size one. They had a, a smaller 
um, edited one it's for nice. less money. Pocket size. <laughs> but, but I got, I, I can't just like have half the story. So I got the whole thing. And uh, it, it's just, it's such an awesome prop. It's, is that the one that has like the three different storylines running through it? Oh, um, wow. it's the, it it's is. Got the, the original author and then the an academic who's gone in and made like liner notes, uh, particularly okay. for like stuff that's in Latin. Got annotations liner in notes it. to write what it is in English because I don't speak Latin. And that that author is sort of that's all he does. He doesn't really make any plot. But then there's the uh, the person the book was written for, and they go through and write other liner notes, and then they read the book again and make new liner notes in a different uh, color ink. As they're uh, going through, like actually doing the stuff in the book, they're, I the go first, into that pl that place and saying, "Yeah, I found that secret that secret hole that my you know that the person who was writing the book you know found, and I I discovered this and this." Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. like there's four stories written in there at once. It sounds like House of Le if you've ever read House of Leaves by Mark Danielowski, um, it's wild. And the original printing of it, because I did have a first edition, but that stayed with my second husband. Um, it was the same way where it had the different storylines going and it had the annotations in there in different colors. And it was, yeah. And if you know who the, um, the musician Poe is, she was real popular in the late 90s, early 2000s. Her second album is actually meant to go along with the book because the author is her brother. <laughs> so if you remember the song Drive um, by Poe back then, hey, or Hey Pretty. I'll have to go look it up. And then there's a guy that's talking in the middle of it. He's It's her brother reading passage a passage from his book. But it's the same thing where it's, yeah, it's this wild story, but there's other storylines going into it. And it's got that, yeah, it's really cool. So that's awesome. How much was that, Thex? Four hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, it's a couple books. Worth, <laughs> worth of I, uh, I bought four other books with it <laughs> that the wife doesn't know about. Well, she doesn't now. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's not in the room. That's <laughs> why so you can tell us now. He he wrote he he uh, made like he took an actual set of. Um, medieval uh, manuscripts and republish them in this same style of handmade, huge. Uh, and and I, I bought them. <laughs> oh, that's the one with like the the, the circles. Uh, the, the I can't think of the guy's name. Anyway, uh, the ones I got, he had a number of options, uh, but I got Agrippa's Philosophy of Magic, volumes one through four. <laughs> It was like one of only a few options that he had that were in English. Ah. And I really wanted to be able to read them. Yeah. And even in English, they're hard to read. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I wrote, yeah. I wrote a paper about Cornelius Agrippa. Fun fact about Agrippa, he successfully defended a witch in Metz. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a really interesting case. Just to look it up sometime. He yeah, this woman was accused of witchcraft. He didn't do it because of any social justice reasons. He just wanted to see if he could successfully defend this woman <laughs> against the church as a witch, and he did. <laughs> yeah, it was challenge accepted kind of thing, and he did it. Yeah, I almost hate to be the <laughs> witch on trial. Going, hey, I'm a little person here. <laughs> nope, she was a test case. It was a test <laughs> <all> case. <laughs> This was before IRB and ethics and studies. Yeah, he just wanted to see if he could do it, and he did it, and it was it was really cool. Oh, man. I had this weird idea today that we'll probably never do anything with, but the, the Malleus Mal Maleficarum. There you go. The, the Witch's Hammer, hammer witches. Yeah. Uh, was very popular in, in uh, late Victoria. Late Victoria? No. That time where they like to hunt witches. No, um, that was the yeah the the mid the six fifteenth sixteenth seventeenth century. And I thought it would be a lot of fun to write a different book of the same style and the same voice on how to find witches and date them. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> how wicked and conniving they are, and how hot that is, and how you could totally find a witch. <laughs> 
well. <laughs> Marry her and save her life. Yep. <laughs> hey, loose thoughts. I mean, put a ring on it. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. Um, what have we got for homework today? Who wants to do homework? I got something. I actually have oh, something. Far. Yeah, um, it popped. It was actually, I heard about this on a podcast that I listen, a daily podcast I listen to. It was just one of those throwaway things, but I went looking for it. Um, Because the show usually asks their guests, what's something in your search history? And this guy was like, "Um, can you ride in a blimp? And I'm like, wait, what? And so he started researching blimps, dirigibles, airships. And what was interesting is that, okay, so how many blimps do you think are in existence right now functioning in the world? Like 16 or 32. Mm-hmm. Odd, spe- oddly specific. <laughs> most of them are probably Goodyear, and there's only like 35 pilots in the world, or something like that. It's actually roughly 25. Okay. And the biggest group is the Air Sign Airship Group, which is awesome. <laughs> but um, the other thing that they were talking about is that, um, and I went and I found the Goodyear passenger guide. The only way you can ride on an airship or a blimp is the, one of the Goodyear blimps, but you have to, you can only do it by invitation only. Yep. You, there's no other way you can do it. And most of the people that are able to get those invitations, because it's like charity auction things where you're paying just an absurd amount of money in you order to do it. a guy and write a large check. Yeah. And it's, I was, and it, I mean, it still sounds like it would be fun to do, but it's also sounds like <laughs> you, know, you have to wear comfortable clothing and shoes with good traction. <laughs> That's like being on a boat. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're walking on yeah. aluminum. I get, it makes yeah. sense to me. I, I get to this, climb but I also understand. Get up there. That, I understand it sounds absurd to a lot of people. No, no, I just it, we have this idea, in you know, in steampunk especially, of this romantic idea of the, the airships, and you get on the airship and you sit in your little chair, you know, your little seat inside the airship, and you have snacks and tea, and <laughs> no, you are up there exposed snacks. to the elements. <laughs> so wear warm clothes. You know, and yeah, you have to climb the ladder to get up there. Those things up. (laughs) But I I don't know. I thought it was because yeah, there's um the Air Sign Airship Group. There they own and operate eight of them. That's like the Direct TV blimp and the MetLife blimp. But there's yeah, yeah, there's a whole there's 25 of them in the world, and that's it. So if you want to take a ride on one, you gotta probably get get it in an auction, and then you can put on your clothes for the <laughs> sub freezing temperatures and your sneakers and go take a ride on an airship so also I, yeah you try to build your own becoming a null was it null air pilot's license or something like that is exceedingly difficult um it is it is apparently well first off it's expensive so mm-hmm. like only businesses will actually pay for you to get it and uh, there's only, like you said, two places that actually want pilots that can fly them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a very, very, very specialized skill set. And it takes a lot of training. So, <clears throat> but, you know, I always wanted to ride on one. So, who knows? Maybe one will come up for auction someday. <laughs> I'll be able to afford to, to get it. Well, I was <laughs> holding on to... Building one is easier than than getting the the license to fly it. Okay, um, safely building one and getting it safely act, in the air and not dying a fiery is, Hindenburg type disaster. Actually, it's a lot of math, and you're not <laughs> yeah, using hydrogen; you're using helium. But one guy had to build one, and basically he had to take it out to a certain area and get it rated as as a null blimp, basically a blimp. And it had to be under a certain size and a certain lifting capacity and all that stuff. It was almost an ultralight. It, he had to put like a couple more pounds on it so that it just sunk downwards versus stay null in the air at sea level. And uh, it's like, you're, you're writing a fine line here, sir. And he's like, well, it's a blimp. It's supposed to be a fine line. <laughs> I was holding on to this story uh, for when I didn't have my homework ready. <laughs> Let me bring it, bring it up. I was watching this uh, YouTube video, like I do all day, about um, advanced technology and uh, future airships. 
mm. and how that they are being uh, engineered with new technology and creating, hopefully, the possibility of, of airship travel in the future. And let, th this kind of blew my mind. Um, you guys mentioned helium as as the uh, the, the lifting agent because mm -hmm. hydrogen is is somewhat flammable. Yeah. <laughs> but the advantage to hydrogen is it's lighter than helium, it's right? Lighter, mm -hmm. yeah. So let me ask you, what's lighter than helium? Nitrogen. <laughs> nope. 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 It's not lighter because it still pools near the bottom. Consider oh. consider your your tape your table of elements from I college high school. Chemistry. Man. <laughs> I mean, it's I have the internet. Lighter than helium. Well, isn't helium like a stretched thin resource as it is? It's one of those things the world's running out of helium or something. Well, we only have so many helium mines. One of the largest ones are here. Okay, in wait, the seriously? States. It comes from mine. Come on. Are you it comes from a fucking rock? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I apologize. So apparently helium is the second most abundant element in the universe. Right. After okay. hydrogen. It just comes from a rock in our case or in ah. space where it's just out it, there. It, no. It, stars are made out of hydrogen and helium. Yeah. <laughs> lots of them. Um, but it's I hard to mine the, the sun. Ah. But what, what is lighter weight than hydrogen? That is my question. I thought you know a lot of got it. He's got it. The answer Backward. is nothing. Ah. Nothing is lighter. And that's what they're going to fill airships with in the future. Just I told you this blew my mind. They're gonna have instead of balloons, they're gonna have hard structures mm -hmm. that are able to hold uh, a vacuum, nothing inside, it's which hard. will pull the 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 structure around it up and away from the high pressure area which we call air isn't that wild <laughs> acum airships it, it's sort of like it makes sense when you think of like lighter than air gases in a balloon we see that all the time but when you start to think about nothing I don't holding you up so I don't understand this... any of that. Okay, okay so I also exactly the same principle. So in this same idea, imagine a one liter bottle full of air, and then uh, just oxygen, and then have another one full of helium, and then have another one that's just vacuumed out completely. The vacuumed out one completely will float better than all than the other two. The other ones will sink just enough, depending on the weight of the air inside of them. So having less of something in an air you're, you're forcing less of something to be in an area so instead of having it where it would shrink down like this you're forcing the nothing to be bigger so that that, that, that would take out of context yeah first. hi i'm a rhetoric major i don't <laughs> i'm history and english if, if it, yeah no i there there's some so concepts that in the same way that an air like okay a air balloon is actually the perfect way to explain this in a lot of ways cold air is thicker Hot air is like is less thick. There, it expands be because it's everything's excited. So, therefore, essentially, vacuum is like the furthest case scenario of like the most excited thing because there's probably only like two or three electrons and air molecules bounce. Okay, electron, not electrons, but a lot less air molecules able to even bounce around to be excited in such an, an environment. Um, I don't. I can't even imagine thinking of it. It's still going to be. The hard case has to be built in a certain way. Right. It's that's going to take a lot of material to keep it from collapsing in on itself and imploding. And that's, that's the trick. A Making a, a rigid structure that can hold a vacuum and not weigh so much that it undermines the whole point of it. Yeah. I will take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. I'm a girl. But there are no, some concepts that no, are hard for my no, brain to wrap you're around. You're a librarian. All right. <laughs> I have dyscalculia, and so anything that feels even vaguely abstract to me, it's really hard for me to. That's why I like history and English because they're <laughs> they're immutable. They're right there, and I can understand them. And when it comes to science, it's for me it's not science. My bag. I know a I know lot where to look for things. Little. I need. 
like I know like about this much about a lot of things. Yeah, just enough to be dangerous. Yes, enough to know <laughs> that I can hold a conversation about large concepts. But the moment like I run into like my, my father in law who starts doing the math on it, I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna believe you on that because I don't know enough to be. Yeah. Like, I, like at that point in time, you've lost me. Yeah, but, I'll take um, your word for it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, will it work? Can we build it? Sure. I'll follow your instructions. Yeah, no, that's <sighs> not not one of my areas of specialty. <clears throat> but apparently, says, who it everything. was mentioned in the difference engine by Gibson. Oh, gosh, I've never almost, read I've, that. I have, but it's but, been so long. <clears throat> it's been more than 10 years since I've read that. It's a good book. I remember I liked it, but... <laughs> I thought it was wild. Blew my mind. I was like, I got to talk about this on the show someday. <laughs> well, I mean, well, see, I'm glad I provided this, you with that chance. <laughs> this would work so well for like, like ballast on an uh, like a submarine, where you have to blow out the water from. You use air tanks to blow out the, about the bladder ballasts of, air, of a submarine, so that the water vacates the area and the ship goes upwards because it's lighter. It would actually be better if you could just pump all the air out of there. And not have water at all, because then you'd be horribly light, because you would just be under this weird, like, physics just wants to pull, just, you know, it, it abhor abhors a vacuum, so therefore it doesn't know what to do with you. And uh, <laughs> so apparently we're just we're going to, yet again, defeat science with, or defeat nature with a loophole. <laughs> like, flying. Oh, Air moving over and under or something has to move at the same speed. We're going to freak out and mess up here. I'll allow lift to happen. <laughs> All righty. Well, Jack, did you bring any homework? Well, yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> you don't sound so sure. Oh, no. I'm, I, I ran across this article on the Mary Sue website, and it caught my eye because August 2nd at 46 uh, 4, 4, uh, at 4 36 p.m. person posted this. This steampunk nutcracker retelling has me humming Christmas songs in August. And I'm like, well, that fits right in with what I want to talk about. Okay. First off, something cooler than our current environment. <laughs> Let's see if I can share my screen here on this because it looks really pretty. And uh, I will admit, I have not read anything about this. I saw it, and I'm like, I'm going to save this, and then got sidetracked. So, but here is some art from it. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. Dis it? Despite seeing the ballet once as an elementary school trip, all my core memories of the epic Christmas adventure of the Nutcracker and the Mouse King by E.T.A. Hoffman are solidified with the 2001 straight to home film Barbie and the Nutcracker. <laughs> due, to all performance op <laughs> yeah. due to all the performance adaptations and remixes, most people's association with the story is not the 1816 original. So when I saw this steampunk retelling in the graphic novel form, my interest was piqued. And then I saw the agile moments of the rat, uh, movements of the rats on the page, and I knew that this was going to be a fun ride. So the basic synopsis reads. The steampunk Carol tells the story of little Caitlin Ward and her bizarre encounter with the tin soldiers and the terrible seven-headed mouse king, which guides her to some important discoveries about her mother and her fate. All right, I'm hooked. I want to know about the seven-headed mouse lord now. <laughs> and so apparently this exists in the world, and I now have to go find it. And is it a comic or? Is it, it is a graphic novel. It's a graphic novel, okay. So I'm looking to see if there's where do I get this? If you want to buy a copy as a gift, ah, this must be it right here. I'm gonna click it, and see what happens. <laughs> Aha! It is a Kickstarter. Kickstarter, okay. So far they have 10 grand and they only need 16,000. They already have 250 people and 16 days to go. Uh oh. Well, and here is had an early <laughs> release. Fui. You... It's an interesting uh, art style. That's pretty. I kind like of it. reminds me of a classic sort of 1950s yeah, it's it's retro looking. look. It's, it's all watercolor painting, it looks like. It could be wrong. That's pretty. 
Toss the link into the... I shall. I'll do both both of the things. Let's see. I have to go to the website for that. I got to watch ourselves real quick. So I'm going <laughs> to turn this off before I have Inception. <laughs> so that was my homework. Although short, but very interesting. No, it's cool. Very cool. Uh, my homework, I don't know how steampunk it is, but uh, it's, it's on my mind. I just finished the first season of Bridgerton. Okay. Which is sort of too new to be Rococo punk and too old to be Victorian steampunk. That Regency period was yes. like the <laughs> no man's land of the steampunk community. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, hey, let's, let's talk about that for a while. You guys have seen Bridgerton? No. It was, no. It was very popular. Uh, it was. And then it stopped being popular so I could watch it. <laughs> I know about it. I mean, I know, I know it came from a series of romance novels, and I, I, I know a lot of people that enjoy it. I just didn't get around to watching it. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing too, and uh, it was. I'm still trying to make my mind up. <laughs> it the, all the characters are very likable. It's very enjoyable to watch. The costumes are a lot of fun. The soundtracks are really cool. Um, the actors are very good acting. Um, good actor people. Good. I mean, they're, <laughs> actor people. the actors are, are good at, at the characters and the characters are, are you like them. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, it's got all the, uh, what I am learning are romance novel tropes that don't make a lick of sense. <laughs> no, they just make people happy. Um, and so, yeah, as I'm watching this with Eric, I hate interrupting. I'm like, why are they acting like this? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? She's just looking at me like, have you never read a uh, romance, romance novel? novel? No. They're not for everybody, but the, the <clears throat> and actually there's another Twitter discourse going on about romance novels. The key thing to a romance novel is the happily ever after at the end. And it's, it's important for some people. It's, you know, it's a good escape. It's it's just meant to, but yeah, I, I read a lot of romance novels when I was 16. Entirely too many. <laughs> I don't remember the name of, I, I got some books that they are romance novels, but they were steampunk oriented, but the, the writer wasn't normally like, a, she didn't do it normally as her thing. She's written a lot of books and I cannot remember the name of her. Book what series. steampunk wasn't her usual thing. Yeah. But or, she wrote like okay. at least three books in the genre of, of the deal. And they were, very funny. I'll admit that the humor was more important than anything else, and uh, it bounced around really well. Do I will you remember admit, who? they're probably not for me, but uh, I'm glad they exist, and I'm glad it makes people read. <laughs> I, I bring it up uh, to some degree because of the last last episode we talked about uh, Victorian rules for. Uh, dating and socializing and uh, the, the different... Uh, the courtship. Right, right. And and um, the imbalance of, of uh, rights between men and women. And it, this was, as far as I know, the same rules um, just 100 years earlier uh, during King George III. But, you know, the same. Uh, so So I thought that was worth bringing up considering we have been talking about it and watching it like seeing this at least in this uh this this author's recreation it had a lot of things that that i could only describe as grooming <laughs> right this this whole show is about grooming young girls to get married to old men yeah that's that's the history, man. I, I knew that, but actually seeing it is is extra gross. I mean, now the main characters do not all marry old men. Most of them are, you know, being wooed by by young men and <laughs> and all that. But it had to do with how know, much money he had. Yeah, or title. Yeah, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the, the the main character, uh, the the heroine, she looks like she's got to be like fifteen or sixteen, it's way too young to for for me as a modern person to be, you know, kind of seeing her being sexualized. The actress is not that young. I had to no. look it up. Yeah. But, <laughs> they usually aren't teenagers anymore in most but shows. Man, by the last few episodes, we're talking Cinemax level of smut. <laughs> like, oh no! <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. Could somewhere else. Romance, no romance novels, some of them, a lot of them can really get down into the details. Like well, I said, I, I read a whole lot of them the when I was a teenager. Written, is there the kind, they're, they're kind of the, the parallel to magazines in a lot of ways. It, it just, depending on how I guess the writer and the author and how deep you're going into it and your flavor of what you want out of it. But, um, and that, that I know there's like a psychological thing to it. And so like men will go with pictures more than, more than stories 90% of the time, but like the story element and the romance, the, the romance going up, leading up to a lot of events in people's relationships are, uh, more important to the other side of the, uh, of I like the, a good story. I, well, we I, know how to woo you now. <laughs> get you good, get you good, uh, good romantic uh, lead into your into your love life. Well, if we were just talking about you know eroticism and uh, sexy stories, and, and we're using Bridgerton as an example, like the most of the first four or five episodes are establishing how restrained and repressed and frustrated they are so that it, you know when you get to the end and it's all like woohoo you yeah. know the, the payoff makes it makes a payoff yeah <laughs> i i get that i get that um they were just so young <laughs> well i mean not all families sold their, their their daughters off that young, but a lot of arrangements were made relative when the, a young woman was or a woman was relatively young to you know lock it down. You know, contracts were signed, dowries were a thing, and you know, depending on who she was going to marry, if he was penniless, he was still acceptable if he had a title. If he was penniless and she brought a big dowry and he could give her you know a title, then go for it. Legitimize your money. That that's how rich Americans went over and uh, you know got legitimacy. I understand that. I do. Yeah. Although I, I mean, I it's not wonder. that doesn't make it better. Nothing makes it better, but no, uh, you can you can understand what they were trying to go for without approving of what they did. You know, there's there are reasons that they did what they did, and children and not even just girls met boys were commodities too because boys could be sold into you know the, the boys with the titles could be sold into marriage to this young woman they didn't want it necessarily either you know yeah and now the, this was a romance novel style story See, it's gonna so be yeah it's gonna, the girls did want to they did uh, want to yeah it's a little well, different yeah but not with this one i want with that one but that one wants this guy and that guy over there is <laughs> Well, and there was going to be fun, I guess. Uh, regency, the regency period was a little bit different, though. Things kind of relaxed a little bit there for a while because that was also a period. I don't care what TV shows you, because TV has a tendency to do this wrong. Corsets were not a thing in the regency period. So when they show women wearing the corsets under those loose flowing dresses with the the on pure waist, that defeats the whole purpose of wearing that dress. Corsets were really, to my knowledge, because I was there was an article that was breaking down like historical accuracy in costuming. Like when they show women on screen with their corsets on with nothing underneath it. They didn't do that. There was a lot of that. Yeah. You wore a shift underneath that corset because the corset was not cheap and you couldn't and you didn't want to sweat it. in it. Yeah, you didn't you couldn't wash it. You didn't want to sweat so you wore a shift under it. But for Regency period, if they wore any kind of foundation garment like that, it would have been light and breathable. You could move in it. Because why would you wear something that's nipping you in when you're wearing an ampere waisted dress? Right. It doesn't yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm corset they're very beautiful on screen and we all let you know the side of a, a lovely woman in a corset but oh, but the corset wasn't the only thing that was uh 
out, out of period. There was a lot of undergarments that were like very modern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, there was also a lot more, at least in this story, a lot of uh, interactions between the noble class and um, other classes that I don't know if that was accurate or if it was just important to the story. But it was it was interesting. The the Duke that you have your mute on. Did I do that? Somebody else did that? No, I did that. I was coughing and I thought I unmuted, but I oh, didn't. Okay. Um, for a period romance novel, yeah, that mixing is is really important because there's usually love across, you know, boundaries and divides have, and you know characters to move story around. Yeah. 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 But I mean, you're also, you do to a certain, they would have to a certain extent interacted with the people within their house. You know, it wasn't necessarily, you know. Well, I understand. I understand you have to talk to the help. But they but made like, friends. To the main character, you know. the Duke, had a, a close friend who was a boxer, like a professional boxer. Oh. Um, I so I guess he was like in the entertainment industry. Yeah. And so I guess maybe it was okay to have them around because they, they were kind of like, you know, entertainment stars. Did they have professional boxing back then? Well, they did in this story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I know boxing was a thing in this case before Queensbury rules, which is to say they didn't have any boxing gloves or anything. They were just, just punch guys punched in the living hell out of each other. Where I come from, that's a fight. <laughs> it's just a fight. That's yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll put money down still, sure. <laughs> yeah, basically it. Bare knuckles boxing? Yes. Well, I think it also probably... I wouldn't place any... I, I, could, I could believe that men would more easily have friendships across those lines than women might, simply because men had a greater access to... You know, certain elements men could ease, you know, it didn't matter what class you were. You go to a low class tavern and, you know, meet people and make friends, you know, or enemies. So they had access that women didn't have. So that I could believe that men could have, you know, cross class friendships. But for women, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that was uh, reflected in the show as well. Uh, it was it was the men going out and uh, meeting, you know, uh, other classes of, of people to hang out with. Mingling. Um, you know, meeting uh, your favorite actress <laughs> and uh, opera singer. Actress. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, a lot of this and that. <laughs> so it made the show interesting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe I'll give it a watch when I get through the stack of things that I'm trying. To... There's so much TV. There are so many shows to watch. I know. Too much. Right. Too much. Too much. Oh, we're currently watching because we have like a backlog too, but we ran across it again. Um, it's literally Swiss Family Robinson in space. It's Lost in Space. Lost the in new space, version the of new it. One? On, well, the new yeah, the new Newer, one, the yeah. newish one. Yeah. Not the movie, which was uh, which was weird in its own right, and not the like the '60s. <laughs> kid tv show that my father-in-law still thinks is king of all of it uh, you know it's but, the new netflix thing right it yeah. came out a few years ago and it feel like yeah it came out like almost like eight years like five six was years it really? ago yeah it's old like in, in comparison to tv <laughs> it's, terms now it's ancient. but the the quality that's they're they're putting out the cgi and the and all of the props they're using feels like it's expanse quality props and the storyline is really good. I mean, you still have to, like those ships must be made out of like the most durable crap in the entire universe. <laughs> However, with that said, they kind of make up for it saying that the whole ship was built on redundancies of redundancies on purpose because they were going to be housing civilians and they wanted to make sure that the idiots could run them, you know, 
or 12 year olds could push the buttons. So, <laughs> cause it's family, they're, they're family ships. Literally it's like, it, it feels like it's almost like the Oregon trail in space too, because everyone's oh, wagons no, are these ships. You have died of call of dysentery. No, you've died of alien dysentery. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've died from a dysentery on another planet. <laughs> A foreign dysentery. <laughs> but you um, have contact. You have contacted space herpes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are some of that too. Ah, but uh, the show is great. I've been enjoying it. Uh, the last, I guess, I think there's only three seasons of it anyway. But it the last season off. only came out not a year ago. Yeah, but I guess, it, but you can definitely tell they have to keep doing like every season's like seven months later or a year and a half later. Because the kids are getting older. Yeah. And so they got to keep it fitting with the kids. Because the first yeah. episode, like, the kids are, like, this tall. And now they're, like, pre they're like teenagers. And, That's like, what's happening with Stranger Things. Yeah, they just keep <laughs> Basically, it was the Stranger Things issue. Yeah. But they at least allowed enough time in between for it to make sense. And all I'm thinking of is, like, did they pack enough of these spacesuits in different sizes? Or is this, like... The special stretchy stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's like the main bits, the, like the hard gear, obviously makes sense. It can be the same size because it's the same. They are just using the same bits because it looked clunky on the kit at first. But <laughs> the, the the it's the neoprene like uh, vac suit part under it. I'm just like, I guess they have like 13 different sizes lined up in a closet somewhere for them because <laughs> you're thinking too much. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been too much on I think about these kind of things. This is what I do in a story. I'm like, where are they putting all these suits? <laughs> um, Via Sci Fi asked uh, about Prey on Hulu. Um, have y'all heard about that yet? Prey? Uh, yes. I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. I want to see it. I probably, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't say whether it falls into any kind of steampunk, but I have heard it is, well, Judging I've heard it's absolutely by the storyline. It's seventh. It's eighteenth century. Yes. Yeah. It's And it's and it's a Native American. Native American, version. and it's all in the Comanche language. The whole thing is in the Comanche language, and which Amber, is going to be great. Yeah, and Amber um, Mid Thunder is the star, and I I've seen her in a bunch of stuff already. She's wonderful. Um, but I will. There's also the warning that there is a subset of people online who are not pleased with the movie of course. and are throwing that's, around that's the, the, the Mary Sue qualifier on the main character, which by all accounts, she is not. She they, they actually go into how she's being trained and how she learns all the things. She's just not magically proficient in I mean, fighting if you really alien want to beasts. go to it, the original Mary Sue happens to be Ripley because she was not trained in half the crap she pulled off. She was just a tough nugget. And it made it wonderful. And but Sarah Connor. They, Sarah yeah. Connor killed the Terminator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, I think what it is, is that there was a lot, a lot of struggle. I think you have to have a lot of struggle to not look like Mary Sue. That's kind of like the problem with the Star Wars franchise when it came in with, with, with the Luke character. was the Mary Sue. Luke no, was a Mary um, Sue. Come on. The other girl, <laughs> the, the girl, uh, Ray. Oh, Ray. She basically like, oh, you can do that with the force. I didn't know that. Hey, look, I can do that now. I, yeah, the accusation I mean, gets thrown around way too I much though, and it's usually meant to denigrate the female characters who are leading yeah, movies. And honestly, I don't feel that that exactly. I mean, there are there are there are moments where that has happened in the books and story, other storylines and whatnot, because you know it's like a mathematical equation. Sometimes it just clicks, um, and if you're really good at it, or yeah. if you have, you know, there there's reasons for storyline bits that will that could force that forward if you were to bring it up i yeah. think that's the other problem too is if you had force ghosts talking her about talking to her every now and then more just have like little whispers going on it would make sense like you have this whole like group of dead you, you know dead jedi kind of just sit there going do it this way you know <laughs> yeah i think that'd be a great addition as like a special that you could like turn on and have like all you know all the ghost force ghosts in the background yelling at her and sometimes they'll get through. It'd be like the movie, it'd be like the TV show Ghost. It's just like, it'd be great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no. We got through! Yes! <laughs> okay, well, I so... Think, I think no matter what you do, somebody on the internet is going to whine yeah. and complain about it, and you just gotta, you know... 
this one involved a, a slur against Native American women, mm -hmm. though. The, the 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 one that people well, that, are, does, yeah. that basically invalidates their argument entirely you lost the game yeah it's yeah it was it was real bad but i've everybody outside of those guys that the gamergate contingent apparently it's it's doing real well a lot of people really enjoy it they're all just the freaking out over her performance so predator shows like predators the one where they got they they took a bunch of people and brought them back to a planet I have That's seen the really very first good. one, and that is so. It. Don't watch any of the Alien versus Predator. I think ones I may have seen one of those. Actually, I think my ex husband they're, made maybe watch they're one. Fun. They're just fun to watch. <laughs> Suspend all belief. Yeah, they're, but, they're not good. No, but they're, <laughs> they're fun. So like they're Freddy versus Jason based kind on of the thing. Whole idea of like the games, right? And not even very closely to the games. It's what? Just, oh. Okay. Um. So I understood that that Prey was like an entirely, the entire cast is Native mm -hmm. American actors. Yep. And so I'm presuming because I haven't seen it largely. It, yeah. There's no, there's no uh, colonials. There's no white people. Um. Not that I, mean, I know of. Which, which suggests to me, and it, maybe I'm maybe I'm jumping jumping to conclusions here, but that would make it. Not likely steampunk. No, I don't think it's because I'm, I'm presuming them. that this is like, except for the fact that there's Native alien American alien. culture that has not been industrialized. That, not, right, that the the white the European French, civilization hasn't touched. Um, oh, French traders. Yeah. Oh, the French traders are in there. Okay, oh, I so wasn't sure. Okay. Every now and then. So, yeah, I was. I was making assumptions. Well. It's, um, yeah, it's it's pretty hmm. early. It comes on. It, or it it takes place pretty early in the history. So yeah, I'm... I I do know that there is they're leading up to a prequel. It seems like um, because there's an item that is passed backwards through time. Well, okay, backwards through time because the movies have been produced backwards in time. Um, where you had aliens, or anyway, Predator Two. There is an, a particular uh, item that gets handed to a character. Okay. That, Somebody yeah. mentioned that there's an Easter egg in Prey yeah. that you don't and have so, to see the other movies, but yeah, that that's it's the same item that's okay. passed on to her because she, you know, obviously we know in the end she survives because she's you know freaking badass, and that's the only way that predators you know will tip their hat to you. And so there is an item that's playing forward, and there's actually a story that goes with that item that's even further back about a pirate oh. and i'm really excited that they might be leading up to the pirate one where this pirate captain essentially the jack of of the pirate world where his whole crew like gets pissed off at him and tries to like mutiny him again mutinies him on an island with the predator and the predator comes to hunt him and like they beat the overlooking crap out of each other and then suddenly like the ship comes back and they make like a, a truce to take out like take the ship back <laughs> and then they'll finish this later. And at the end of it, the predator's just like, nah, man, I salute you. Have this. Or, or you know, like, I'll, I'll give you a thing. And the pirate hands him a thing. Or he dies in the midst of doing this and hands the, and hands the predator a thing. I don't remember. I've, ne I've never read the thing. I just know this exists as a story. <laughs> and it's a, I, I want to watch it on a show on TV because predators mm -hmm. with pirates just makes my life so happy and just thinking about this. And uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Seems to be if it's an Easter egg popping up now, and we're at yeah. this time period, we got to go back a couple, like another hundred years. I think it was like 1760 something or something like that for when the, well, the item was brought forth. Because this um, takes place um, in the 300 years. It says Comanche Nation 300 years ago. Yeah. So yeah. So we're 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 in that time period where we're we're the that item is relatively new. Well, maybe not new, but like it's still a collector's item at this point, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really enjoy most of the predator movies just for the fact that the, the tension of those movies is usually well done. Even if it's put forth with Debbie, Glo Danny Glover in freaking Los Angeles, it's still, the tension is still there. <laughs> and uh, I mean, once you get past the, get to floor, for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a yeah, quote. Also, to quote when a you lot consider how old days. he was when he said that line and what lethal weapon, you know how old he was, right? 
still in his 40s? He was in his 40s. Yeah. And now he's like, how much older? Yeah. <laughs> he's like in his 70s. And he's like, ah, still saying this line. Yep. Well, I'm going to watch it. And I'm actually, maybe I'll just like, go ahead and watch that tomorrow night. Is it on Hulu? Yeah, it's on Hulu. And people okay, are just got Hulu right now really losing their minds uh, over it. So the, the Orville has been fantastic. I'm going to have to wait. Because Sandman is oh, on Netflix. It was Arr, so. I watched the first episode last night. Uh, it was it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I really. We're going to it. be watching it shortly. It's just I don't think yeah. it's completely appropriate for a nine year old. No, and, uh, that's kind of what we figured. No. And so we're like, yeah, we're just going to watch Lost in Space and finish mm -hmm. that out. It was excellent though, because I remember when I was a teenager. I remember when the comic books came out because my brother was a com is a comic book nerd, and I remember him busting into my room like Lizzie, Lizzie, look, look at this. And he would bring him in and show oh. him to me. Yeah, so like the Crow and Sandman and all of those. Yeah, my brother would come in. I never actually read Sandman. My brother would come in and tell me about the new story because he'd be so excited. Is that the same universe as the Guardians? The, like uh, the movie and the book series? What, Sandman? Well, yeah, because... Sandman's DC. Well, okay, so circles that, around that's DC. That's going with. Okay, because there's yeah. like a loose one, obviously, based off of... Vertigo. The, yeah, it was the a... The original like Sandman idea and the darkness and whatnot. Uh, the, Sand the movie The Guardians <laughs> that was for kids. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, there's a book it, series that goes with that too. Yeah, because remember Sandman kind of circled also around Swamp Thing and Constantine and that hell laser. I will laser admit that I do not know that much about the DC Universe side of things, other than like I said, I know because of my brother. Because so. I don't of, think you, you know, need to. Like you it, don't. Neil Gaiman is his own. Yeah, yeah this is uh, an, he, yeah. universe. DC can block can sort of bleed into it, but Gaiman doesn't really. Uh, he doesn't try to lean on DC. He's got his yeah. own thing going on. This is yeah. yeah this is definitely pulled back from the DC universe, okay. but by, by also because the fact that the Constantine, the Constantine that is in the show, it's not John Constantine. It's oh, okay. It's an, it's it, it's Joanna, his ancestor. They oh. took his ancestor Joanna and they took John Constantine and they merged and they made Joanna Constantine is the character that you're going to see in the show. And it's uh, Jenna Coleman plays him plays her. From so, Doctor Who, and also that, played Victoria. So it is actually those two characters put together, or it's just it's, that yeah, it's is, a it's, it's it's a melded character, yeah. Okay, and so she's okay. Joanna. So it's, it's supposed Joanna to be Constantine. kind of both of them at once. All right. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, so it's yeah they took and she's she's excellent. She's good. <laughs> it's I mean it's Jenna Coleman. I like her in anything, but yeah, it was the whole thing was just. Oh. It's gonna make me want to just go back and rewatch Constantine now. I know. It oh is. yeah, I rewatched that a few months ago. The show or the movie? The, the movie. With the movie. Uh, is there a show? The Matt Ryan show that was on NBC. It ran for one season, thirteen episodes, or ten or thirteen episodes, well, and that's how Matt Ryan's Constantine ended up on Legends of Tomorrow. His show got canceled on NBC, and so he got sucked into an episode of The Arrow. And everybody was so excited to see him that they ended up bringing him into Legends of Tomorrow as a semi-regular cast member. Huh. See, yeah. I've not watched Arrow yet, so I'm a little behind He's on that. He's only one. on one episode of Arrow, but like they used that as the jump-off point to get him into okay. Legends. I, yeah. haven't, I haven't watched that. The show? It's It was so good. I was so Just because of the pictures, he's way more appropriate than Keanu Reeves. I mean, I love Keanu, but I didn't like that. I didn't, yeah. No, the Matt Ryan show was just, it okay, was well, so good. <laughs> my version of Constantine in my head is apparently, that, you know, is, 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 is messed up because of Keanu Reeves playing him. But that's Watch forever the... what's going to be my main idea of, Keanu, of, of Constantine is going to be Keanu Get Reeves. Back the comic. Get back to the comic. Yeah, watch the watch the the, the the show that was on NBC. Like I said, the the original Matt Ryan show. I can't remember. It was 10 or 13 episodes. It's really okay. good. I can't, and I also don't remember what service I watched it on. It may have been, I don't know if it was Hulu or Netflix, but it's on one of them. So, okay. yeah, highly recommend. But yeah, no, Sandman, I, I really liked it. I thought it was it was really well done. So, I've yeah. only seen one episode. I totally, like, I could tell it's going to be hard to just watch one episode at a time. Oh, no, I plowed through it because um, oh, no. I forgot until <laughs> Friday afternoon. So, I plowed through it. Uh, Friday afternoon, and Saturday. Then, then it'll be over and I'll, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> sad. I'll hate myself. <laughs> Uh, I don't All know. Right, well, we are over time. I know. I, I want to uh, just real quick here uh, hit the calendar because we have a couple of really good things coming up. Delta H Con 
in Houston is next, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after, the 19th uh -huh. through 21st. And it looks like they're going to have a really awesome steampunk track. So if you're in the Houston area or you're looking for something to uh, do before uh, school starts up, Delta HCon looks like it's going to be awesome. Um, and then at the end of the month, Big River Steampunk Festival uh, up in Hannibal, Mon uh, Missouri is coming. If you have the means to do that. Those, uh, those two things are, are, are August and uh, very... Very worthwhile if you're able to do either one of those. Um, on. We don't uh, usually talk about uh, upcoming calendar events on the regular, but we probably should. Probably should. Now, now, that, now, that, now that things are happening again, yeah. uh, back in the day, like half our show was just like, here's all the stuff that's happening. And, you know, for the last three, two and a half years, we're like, nothing, nothing happening. Nope. Yeah. Stay home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Rita pointed out this weekend is the steampunk is a steampunk November volunteer weekend. So if you're in the area up here and you you can get oh, out there and help, sweet, yeah, that is a great way to like, you know, meet and connect with other steampunks that are going to be at Steampunk November yeah. ahead of time. You know, make plans to get together and and uh, make friends early. That that's cool if you can do that. Okay. So, uh, it's time to thank our patrons for keeping the lights on. Uh, the show has been brought to you in part by FairTreasures.com, which has a selection of Texas-made female-presenting costumes and accessories for Renaissance fairs and steampunk wear. Uh, also, one-of-a-kind jewelry and alchemy jewelry imported from England. You can shop Fair Treasures at www.fair, with an E, treasures.com or on Etsy. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Jenny and Ryan Shaver and Rita and Lawrence Allen who have been listening and commenting tonight. We appreciate you both for uh, helping on uh, Patreon. If you'd like to join Patreon, look us up, Texas Steampunk Connection. We'd be very, very uh, thankful to to have your, your addition. Uh, you can find us on Texas uh, on Facebook at <laughs> Texas Steampunk Connection, if you're not here now. Uh, you can email us at Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com if you have some insights. If you'd like to send us a message that's more than just a comment. Um, Texas Steampunk Connection dot podbean dot com is our podcast. If you're not you know, watching us live or you'd rather watch us on a podcast, it's the same show. Uh, this will be going up by Friday. Uh, we're also on Twitter at TX Steam Connect One and YouTube and Rumble through the Steam Chest subscription box that Jack manages. Uh, which is an excellent subscription box if you'd like to get uh, Steampunk stuff every what every quarter. <laughs> At this moment in time, it's we're, we're we're shooting for every quarter. Shipping has been so weird, but. Uh... Thank you for your contribution. I wanted to. I wanted to. Uh, I was going to talk about that a little bit for people, but I think I'll. Leave, I'll think I'll put it in the box and let people see it first, and then we'll talk about it later. And our music is brought to you by Zapsplat.com. Facebook hates Zapsplat and takes <laughs> our show down every time we uh, post. We are, it. Yeah, and we, so, we, we, it is so Zapsplat.com. Just get that out there. <laughs> Our music is from Zap Splat. Don't take it down. Don't take us down for five minutes or five hours or five days or however long it was. Anyone want to place any bets before we log off? Uh, I'm going to say it's going to come to like a meeting. Jack, in case you didn't know, they took us down again last yeah, episode. I heard. Yeah, for... it's happened twice so far. Yeah. Doing it for a year, then suddenly, you know? They, they bring us right back up when I complain, but it's a more matter of do I notice? But anyway. Need to post a picture of Dirty Harry doing the whole like coffee thing. I came back here to complain. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and uh, participating in our conversation. Uh, we will be back in two weeks on Tuesday at eight PM. Anything else you want to add? All right. Mind your gauges. Mind your Mind gauges. Your gauges. <laughs>